Hey, what's up ladies and gentlemen? I'm Nia Zalea and today it's Filmmaking Friday. In today's Filmmaking Friday, I will be showing you how to create a callout title in Adobe After Effects. It's super simple to do. We're gonna track that callout title into a shot that I use from video.pixels.com. It's a free stock footage website where I can find videos uh, for my tutorials. This has not been sponsored. I just wanted to mention that where I found this shot. So callout titles are a very cool way to show a location, uh, show some technical details about um, some device or whatever. So um, it's super cool thing that you can use in a ton of videos and it just makes the video a lot more dynamic and a lot more pleasing to watch. So without further ado, let's jump into Adobe After Effects and crack this cookie. <laughs> okay. All right, so just like in the example right here, you see the example footage uh, with the call out title on this cocktail bar. I don't even know if it's a bar, but um, yeah, uh, in the Maldives uh, for a mojito, you pay only $3, so that's pretty nice. Um, okay, so a very simple shot it's a uh, drone shot i assume uh, so what we'll do is first of all we're going to create our call out title in a separate composition then afterwards we're going to apply that to our video so what i'll do is um yeah i will go to project manager and just put everything in here in a new folder so we can get rid of that and then i'm going to create a new composition so let's imagine we're starting from scratch i'm going to rename this to call out title main and what I did is I went to composition, composition settings and gave this a color so you can uh, really choose what color, but just not black, gray or white, um, just so we can see the color title a little bit better. Okay, so the first thing that I like to do is go over here to the rectangle tool. If we uh, click and hold, we can change that to an ellipse tool. So I will do that. Go to the fill options right here and set this to no fill and go to the stroke and set this to fill and then click OK. And the stroke, we want to make it white. Okay, there we go. Maybe with a width of seven. And then let's go over here to the uh, project manager. Well, actually, uh, what am I saying? The program monitor. And then right here we can click and uh, check title action safe. That will give us this cross in the middle so we can actually see this uh, center reference. So that's pretty nice. Okay, so I'm going to hover my mouse just in the dead center. So trying to make this as perfect as I can. Click and hold control and shift while dragging out. So now we're making a perfect circle from the from the center out. Okay, so I'm going to release it right here, click away, and this is what I have. That's perfect. Okay, so once you've created that, what I like to do is immediately animate it because we want to duplicate it. So I'll go and click on this, open it with the arrow right here, go into the ellipse, and right here I want to add a trim path. Trim path allows you to, yeah, trim the path. So we, if we open that up, we see a start and an offset. The end, we want to set it to zero at the beginning of our timeline and create a keyframe for that. Then hold shift and press the page down key, which will jump 10 frames forward and do it one more time. So we're 20 frames forward in time. And then you set the end at 100. So now we have this animation of the circle kind of growing, which is pretty cool. Maybe we want to make it a little bit more dynamic. So I will click on the last keyframe, right click keyframe assistance and click easy ease. Then it's going to give it a slow stop, but we want to do it a little bit more dry and dramatic. So what we'll do is go into the graph editor right here by clicking on this icon, then selecting that last keyframe and just bringing it in. And that will just slow the animation very uh, nicely at the end. So you can see what it's doing. It starts fast and it slows down. Okay, so that's really cool. We have our first animation. We want to click on that layer and now duplicate that layer. So we're going to press Ctrl D or go to Edit Duplicate right here. Okay, so once you've done that, I want to press S on the keyboard, go till the end so we actually see uh, the circle here and S is for scale. We want to scale it down to something like 25 and there we can see a small circle just to add a little bit more detail in our shot. Okay, so that's pretty nice. Next, we want to create a new solid layer and this is going to be our stroke. So we're going to rename it to stroke and click OK. I want to uncheck this so we don't see that in our layer and go till the end of our circle so we actually see what we're working with. Then we go to effects and presets right over here and we're going to search for the stroke effect. It's a separate effect under generate. We're going to apply that effect to the solid layer. So currently we're not seeing anything, but uh, we're going to use this as a reference. So I will go to um, the pen tool and click in the center right here then hold shift and click somewhere around maybe here and then hold shift and click somewhere around here. So now we have this kind of line that we created and then here in the stroke, 
we can select that mask by going to path mask one then we want to check this layer again and we see this uh, white solid that we created but in paint style we want to change this to on transparent and now we have our paint style the brush size change it to something like seven and the hardness to 100 and maybe seven is a little bit too much so five or even four would be great and if we click away we see that we now have a growing line i'm going to make it even thinner uh, maybe something like three there we go so now we have this uh, really neat line and what we want to do is uh, click on this stroke path uh, well this layer and also duplicate this one so Control D then here I want to click on this mask just double click on it so we can delete it now we have no masks on this layer anymore but we want to create a new one click on the path and click over here hold shift and click over here so now we have a different path you can also move it down if you want to like this seems a little bit better and then again select that mask in the path selection for the stroke now we have a second stroke like this okay so that's pretty cool we know we don't have any animations but that's for later then next one you want to do is go over here and create a new rectangle tool and we're going to unselect the stroke here so we're going to click on the name stroke no stroke then go over here to the fill fill okay and i'm going to make it a little bit bigger so i'm going to just draw a rectangle something like uh, this and then just move it over here and then i want to change this anchor point because currently the rectangle is growing from from the center out so that's not what we want uh, we want to go here so with the pen behind tool select this center one and drag it over here and hold control in the meantime that will make it snap over here then we want to press s on the keyboard and uncheck the constraint proportions for the scale click on the scale and set it to zero over here go 20 frames shift and page down and set it back to 100 again right click keyframe assistance easy ease go into the graph editor just make this longer there we go and now we have this kind of animation so that's pretty nice what we want to do is duplicate this uh, a few times so one um, we duplicate it at one time drag it down another time and drag it down there we go so select these three and then go to the align tab right here if you don't see that we can go to window align and we want to click on this one here so distribute the layers evenly uh, and there we have our sizes so that's pretty cool we have this animation so before we continue we're going to um, make all the animations so press U on the keyboard to reveal all the keyframes. So right here we have this animation of the circle. Almost before it ends, we're going to click on the stroke and we're also going to animate the end right here. So for the stroke, so set it to zero. Click on the end keyframe on the stopwatch. Shift um, page down forward to so 10 frames. And again, do that once more. Set the end to 100. Then again, press U on the keyboard to reveal those keyframes. Right click, uh, well, select the last keyframe keyframe assistance and easy ease go again in the graph editor and make this longer great so now we want to select these two copy these with ctrl c go to the new one and paste them and we can also make this a little bit sooner so it's growing right here and then we have our shapes here so in these shapes we want to put our text so we want to change the colors of these shapes so maybe this one we want to make it uh, white and maybe this one we want to make it black okay and maybe this one we want to make it a nicer yellow all right there we go and then we want to uh, click on our text and change this to Maldives for example Put that over here and duplicate it and just make sure your text is on top so I'm going to select the two layers and put them on top here tropical bar and I actually made my text grow from the right aligned text uh, which is better in my opinion and duplicate it one more time drag it down and then here mojito is three dollars okay there we go and this text we're going to make it white so we can actually see it on the black background okay great so that looks pretty cool uh, i'm going to make it center a little bit better with our rectangles 
and then I want to make our rectangles as large as it, uh, as it should be. So what I'll do is go to the last keyframes here of the scale for those rectangles and click on each individual rectangle and just make sure that the size is accurate. So we can make this extended a little bit like this. Okay, I think we have this done. It looks pretty good. Uh, it looks pretty good. So what I'll do is select all these three layers, duplicate them and put them on top here. And what we want to do is each uh, text we want to put it below its uh, correct shape. So the tropical right here and the mojito should be here. Then if we toggle the switches, we can choose a track mat. So what I want to do now is actually reveal the text only with the alpha of the uh, of the shapes. So only where the shape is, the text will be revealed. So and that's because I'm going to be doing an animation because now if the uh, if these animate on, the text is still there. We don't want that. We want to click here, alpha mat, and boom, now your text is only when this shape is kind of growing. So that's what we want. And just make sure the correct um, yeah, rectangle is above it. Okay, there we go. So now it's kind of hovering. Really cool. Uh, one more thing I like to do is also animate my text. So I'm going to click here on my text, hold control while I select everything. I'm going to press P on the keyboard, click on the stopwatch so we have a keyframe for everything. And then go over here and just move them all to the left, something like this. And now they move in. I'm going to select the last keyframes here and again right click keyframe assistance, easy ease, go to the graph editor and make it longer. Okay. It's so very repetitive. And then what I want to do is click on the Maldives here and then on this shape or no, not this shape, this shape and just make sure that all the shapes are correctly together. What we can do is actually uh, give them a color, maybe yellow in this case, and then put them together here. And then I'm going to find the other ones. So we have this shape uh, with this text. Okay. This can be red. And we're going to drag that over here and this one we want to offset for example already a little bit then for the last one we can give it another color and offset this one as well and now we have something like this really cool all right so we have our call out title great so now what we want to do is go to our project manager and import our footage so drag in your footage into a new composition and then what we want to do is go to the tracker tab right here and track the camera and then I'll go to advanced and check detailed analysis and then it's going to analyze in the background and once you've tracked that you will see a bunch of dots right here and go over here and try to find a good spot for example right here uh, where, where you see the circle to kind of follow the perspective of the shot it kind of needs to be a little bit uh, correct and now we right click and create null and camera so if you do that uh, we created a, a null and a camera and if you toggle the switches you can see that that null is a 3d null so go to the project manager and now we want to import that call out title so uh, we have that call out title right here call out title main drag it into this composition and we can see that we have this animation on a transparent layer really cool um, but before we have to, we can track it to the camera that 3d camera we also have to make this a 3d layer so we can click here and make it a 3d layer there we go and then the null is uh, attached to this house because we just selected that null over there so so what I'll do is press P on the keyboard click on the position and control C and then click on the call out title and we're going to paste these positions position um, attributes to uh, the color title. We press S on the keyboard to scale it up if you want to. And then of course you can reposition it just a little bit, but it should attach perfectly now to that bar. So I'm going to uh, kind of start from here, press D, um, yeah, B on the keyboard and let's see the animation. Okay, so that's super cool. We have a call out title here in Adobe After Effects uh, with a great result. So um, I'm actually working on a call out title pack and I will put the link in the description. Uh, I will also help to support the channel if you buy that pack. It's currently not out yet, but I'm working on it. So um, if you watch this video later, the link might already be there. So. Um Yep, that's it. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give this video a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more and definitely check out our website. We have a bunch to offer for filmmakers and motion graphics artists. If you buy something from the website, it really helps to support this channel. So apart from that, I hope, I really hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.